We are leaders in human microbiome, and that cross-collaboration is key to bringing solutions to market. As more customers are removing and reducing the use of antibiotics, it's more important these days to better understand what's going on in the gut microbiome. If you look at the gut like a black box, the more we know about that gut microbiome, the better off we'll be. Through our microbiome research, we have amassed well over 50,000 bacterial isolates. Some of those bacteria are pathogenic, some are known to be beneficial, but we also have a number of bacteria that are uncharacterized. These bacteria are potential for new probiotic solutions. In order to do this microbiome work, we need a state-of-the-art microbiology lab. Samples are collected in the field. They're overnighted to us. We then take the samples. We cut the sections of the intestinal tract that we're interested in. We masticate those samples to release the bacteria that are attached to the lining. We do our dilutions, and then we plate them on selective media. Once the samples are lysed and no longer infectious, we pass them through to our downstream processing. The next step in the downstream processing is the DNA isolation and then determining the virulence genes. We don't just monitor the presence of the virulence genes, we monitor the pattern of those genes. So for example, if you have five gene targets, that's two to the fifth, that's 32 possible patterns of genes. So out of five, those five genes, you can have gene ABC, ABD, ABE, and we think monitoring those patterns is more important than just knowing the number of bacteria that are there or whether the bacteria have one or two or three of those pathogenic genes. And we've also expanded to beyond those five genes to 10 genes, so now that's two to the 10th, which is 1,024 virulence marker patterns that we can monitor. I should point out that our pathogens are not just from the U.S., they're from countries all over the world. That diversity is important when we measure the efficacy of our probiotics against them, because all the bacteria aren't going to act the same. They're going to act differently from where they came from, different backgrounds, different genetic types. And just like all pathogenic bacteria aren't the same, all probiotics aren't the same. 